state of the art on, uh, on this uh, disease of, uh, of plants. The second objective is to identify gaps in uh, this knowledge. And the third objective of this, uh, of this workshop will be to formulate uh, research needs and prioritize them uh, to build uh, collectively uh, an agenda. And uh, we do that uh, under the uh, a request from uh, the European Commission. And today and tomorrow, you will see representatives from um, different uh, directorate generals in, uh, in, uh, in the Commission. Uh, because uh, what we will do during this workshop is uh, of uh, direct uh, uh, interest uh, for, uh, for them. Um, I have a uh, um, few um, information to, to, uh, uh, to, to pass. First, the first one is, uh, is that this session and the, the plenary session tomorrow are webcasted which means that uh, uh, people outside the, the, the room can follow the presentations and uh, the debates. Um, the, there is um, um, the usual request to switch off uh, your uh, mobile phones. Um, there is a, a Wi-Fi connection uh, in the room and the, 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 the password is EFSA. Uh, it's not a very secret password. Uh, but I'm told that the, the Wi-Fi is not extremely powerful, so uh, uh, if you don't absolutely need it, uh, it's probably better to, uh, to just uh, um, ignore the, the, um, uh, the Wi-Fi. Um, in your uh, welcome pack, uh, you will find, of course, uh, the agenda of, uh, of the workshop. You will find also a list of, uh, of, of participants. You've been assigned to uh, breakout sessions, so after this, uh, this uh, plenary session this morning, you, we will break out into uh, smaller groups to review uh, four uh, more specific aspects of, uh, of, of, the, of uh, Xylella. Uh, one is on, on the bacterium itself, uh, another is on uh, the uh, plant hosts, um, another is on the vectors, and a very important uh, topic uh, for us in, uh, in Europe is uh, uh, the surveillance. I say important topic uh, uh, for us in Europe. The disease has been, uh, has been uh, considered as exotic for a uh, uh, long time and only recently entered the uh, EU territory, uh, but it's known outside. And I'm, I'm very happy that uh, uh, for this workshop, we managed to, to bring people from outside. So from uh, Brazil and the United States, experts helping us also to, uh, uh, to review uh, this uh, this uh, knowledge. I have uh, Professor Jagger with me. Mike is uh, chair of uh, of um, the uh, Plant Health uh, Scientific Panel of uh, of EFSA, and Mike has kindly uh, accepted to play the role of uh, overall reporter uh, for uh, for this workshop. He will uh, follow our, our discussions and uh, and debates. Um, and it will give us also the, uh, the final conclusion um, tomorrow um, at the end of, uh, of this uh, workshop. Um, with this, I would like to invite uh, Patrick Collard, um, head of the Agri-Food Chain Unit at uh, the General Directorate for uh, uh, Research and Development at the European uh, uh, Commission. He will uh, introduce this, uh, uh, this workshop. Patrick, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues. Um, let me welcome you warmly uh, on behalf of the European Commission and in particular DG Research and Innovation, where I am coming from, uh, to the workshop Xylella Fastidiosa, Knowledge Gaps and Research Priorities for the European Union. We are very pleased that you have been able to take some time away from your busy schedules to be with us the, the next two days, uh, because we believe that the outbreak of the Xylella fastidiosa in the European Union is a very serious issue at, that you will discuss during the next two days. Um, as it has already been mentioned, the, this workshop is being organized jointly by the EFSA and the European Commission, DG Research and Innovation, 
but also with the support of the DG Agriculture and Rural Development and DG Santé. I'm also happy to mention that you are more than 120 uh, in this room, and, at, as, and as it has already been said, some of you are coming from very far away, from the countries uh, where the Xilela has been known uh, for many decades already, and you will contribute with your knowledge uh, to, the, um, to, the, to, to, to the, this European issue um, that we have now for around two and a half years. You are coming from research institutes, national and regional plant health services, stakeholder organizations such as, for example, Copa Cogeca, European Farmers and Agri Cooperatives Organization, um, international federations like FAO, um, European and Mediterranean Plant Protection Organization, and Eufresco Iranet, as well as uh, the International Center for Mediterranean Agronomic Studies, EFSA, as well as the colleagues from the Commission. As it has already been mentioned, the Xylella is one of the most dangerous plant pathogens worldwide, provoking significant damage to a number of crops, including olive trees, grape wine, citrus, and ornamental, with huge economic impact for agriculture. The pest is quarantined in the European Union, and according to EFSA, there is no control uh, method currently available to cure diseased plants in the field. Since the first outbreak of Xylella in the Union territory in October 2013, EU emergency measures have been put in place since February 2014 and were reinforced in May this year. These containment er and eradication measures are based on the latest scientific information available worldwide provided by EFSA in January 2015. Given the level of uncertainty, EFSA recommended the intensification of research activities on the range of host plants affected as well as epidemiology and control of the Xylella outbreak occurring in southern Italy. Therefore, it is our ongoing, urgent, and multi-country effort to tackle the problem of Xylella. It is ongoing because this workshop is the follow-up of the one that has been organized in July this year uh, at Expo in Milan in the European uh, Union Pavilion, titled Xylella Fastidiosa Options for its Control. It is urgent because it requires immediate action on behalf of all institutions at regional, national, and European level including the Commission organizing dedicated workshops and preparing topics and launching projects through Horizon 2020. It is a multi-country effort because similar, uh, similar efforts are underway across the world in countries such as US and Brazil. And it is our belief that there is no need to reinvent the wheel, but rather to work together to fix the problem. Let me say also the few, works, uh, the few words about the structure of the workshop. The workshop has several parts. Uh, we are starting with the plenary session with an in-depth uh, keynote lectures and presentations. We asked leading experts in the area to present their approaches and to talk about difficult issues they encounter and solutions that they propose. The plenary session will be followed by breakout sessions addressing specific questions, such as surveillance and detection, vectors, plants, and patog pathogens. Each of the above mentioned breakout sessions will be divided into introduction to the specific topic, several presentations, and moderated discussions. The hands-on on specific breakout sessions should serve to make more concrete gap analysis and set priorities for facing the outbreak in the specific areas. The sessions have been designed in a way to get most out of the experts and country-specific experience. Therefore, I would like to encourage you to interact between uh, all participants during this, uh, the course of the workshop, of course, as well as informally during the networking cocktail at the end of the day. On Friday, following up today's discussions, we will wrap up and conclude, so to give the opportunity to each rapporteur to present the outcome of, the, of each particular session. After that, my colleague from DG Agri will present the research priorities in Horizon 2020 and more specifically the call on the Xylella fastidiosa that is open uh, now. As our director many times says, how will the success look like? So the success of this workshop. We will say that uh, we have achieved our objectives if you will leave this course with an understanding of the complexity of the disease triangle between pathogen, vector, and host, and the major potential impact on the European agriculture. Also, when we will have information regarding recommendations to tackle the outbreak of Xylella and identification of knowledge gaps, and when we will have common grounds on key priorities for future research 
on Xilila in the European Union. Therefore, once again, uh, a very warm welcome to you all and my best wishes for the success of this workshop, which I believe will be a very productive and useful, very intensive day and a half of learning and interaction. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. <clears throat> so the, the next speaker this morning is another um, EU, represent EU Commission representative. This is Pasquale de Rubio, and he's uh, within the Plant Health Unit of uh, DG Sante, and he has responsibilities for the EU regulatory framework for Silella fastidiosa, amongst other uh, duties. Good morning, uh, everyone. Um, I'm from the plant health unit of DG Sante, the unit uh, in charge of the regulatory framework of the Xylella fastidiosa in the union territory. I would like to give you just a, a short uh, update about uh, uh, the control measures uh, in place, uh, the status of Xylella in our territory. Um, so, um, just uh, as introduction, uh, Xylella fastidiosa is a quarantine organism uh, that is regulated uh, under the plant health directive, uh, the general framework uh, of our plant health uh, legislation uh, since many years already. So it's not uh, something uh, new. Uh, so uh, member states have uh, the legal obligations to report uh, any presence of the bacterium in their territory and take uh, any measures to eradicate uh, the organism or at least inhibit uh, any food spread in the union uh, territory. So this is a general obligation uh, regarding the status of Xylella in the union territory. Um, however, uh, the European Commission, after the first notification of the Italian authorities about the presence of Xylella fastidiosa in southern Italy in October 2013, uh, took some preliminary emergency measures in February 2014, which basically uh, prohibited the movement of planting material out of the demarcated area, with the exception of a very limited number of uh, host plants, which were considered at the time not to be hosting uh, Xylella fastidiosa, but it was mainly a um, uh, movement prohibition. After that, uh, in July 2014, uh, the European Commission took some uh, more detailed emergency measures. And finally, in May uh, 2015, so very recently, we have strengthened measures in place uh, to prevent food spread of uh, the organism out of the demarcated area and also to prevent further introduction from third countries in the Union territory. Uh, just to give you uh, some um, uh, short uh, overview about the uh, regulatory framework in place. Uh, so uh, the uh, decision uh, 789 of 2015 uh, set general uh, measures uh, which are applicable to all union uh, territories, so to all member states. Uh, there are uh, legal obligations for survey activities to be carried out uh, across member states, detection uh, measures, and also uh, a legal obligation to set up a demarcated area uh, in case uh, the organism is present. So uh, just to um, uh, clarify a bit um, uh, the regulated uh, plant species, uh, uh, we have uh, a long list of regulated plant species. Uh, Annex 1 is uh, uh, called uh, specified plants. So we have more than 200 plant species. Uh, uh, regulated so far is mainly for movement restrictions uh, and uh, also annex to host plants which is a more restricted number of uh, host plants uh, basically uh, the ones that uh, have been found to be infected so far in the union territory uh, and in this case the list of uh, host plants applies to er eradication containment measures planting prohibition, uh, this kind of uh, um, measures. Of course, we regulate only plant for planting, so no fruits or seeds uh, are regulated. It's also important to mention that. 
So just to so, um, uh, 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 give you some details about the concept of demarcated area uh, in uh, any kind of sanitary, uh, uh, phytosanitary approach, uh, we have this uh, uh, demarcation of the area which consists in uh, an infected zone, the red uh, part, uh, where we apply basically uh, is the, where uh, the xylella fastidiosa is known to be present, where we apply eradication measures or uh, in a, a very specific case for the province of Lecce where the bacterium is, no, uh, is uh, well established and the eradication is no longer possible, we apply containment measures. But except of the province of Lecce, all outbreaks uh, found to, to be present in the Union territory, we have eradication measures in place. And also we have movement restrictions from the infected zone. At the same time, the infected zone is surrounded by a buffer zone of 10 kilometers where we apply intensive monitoring. Uh, also movement restrictions of the specified plants uh, are in place, uh, vector controls, agricultural practices uh, to control the vec insect vectors and so on. Uh, just to uh, uh, give uh, some details also about the eradication measures. Uh, so, uh, which uh, have been strengthened in May 2015. So, uh, in the infected zone, uh, the eradication measures apply. Uh, so, there is a legal obligation to remove within 100 meters around the infected zone, uh, the infected plants, all the infected plants and symptomatic plants, but also host plants, regardless their health status. Uh, this is needed because uh, there is always uncertainty about the distribution of the bacterium into the plants. So we want to make sure that on a precautionary basis, we remove all host plants in, around the infected plants. Um, at the same time, there is a, a legal obligation for sampling and testing of the specified plants, the 200 uh, uh, species uh, which are present within these 100 meters, apply phytosanitary treatments prior to the removal of plants, and also agricultural practices to control the insect uh, vectors. At the same time, containment measures, as I said before, apply only for the province of Lecce, where we are, we are more targeted uh, the removal of only infected plants. So there is not uh, any legal obligation to remove plants, um, uh, symptom symptomatic or, or host plants uh, regardless their health status. But also the removal of infected plants is done in a very specific cases and not in the entire province of Lecce. At the same time, also here, we have sampling and testing um, activities of uh, the host plants within the 100 meters uh, to, in order to see whether they're infected or not, and if they're infected, to remove them, and also uh, ap appropriate phytosanitary treatments and agricultural practices. Movement restrictions are very strict for all specified plants uh, which originate from a demarcated area, but also if they come from a third country where uh, xylella is known to be present. So we have uh, uh, very uh, strict conditions applying. Uh, so they have to be grown under protected uh, conditions. Uh, so where the, mm, uh, the insect vector cannot uh, fly into the uh, production site, official checks uh, prior to the movement, uh, plant passport, also traceability requirement for internal movement in order to trace back and forward uh, the, uh, the movement of the plants once they leave the demarcated area. Uh, also, as an additional uh, obligation for third countries, uh, they have to uh, notify to the European Commission the status of Xylella fastidiosa in their territory. So they have to uh, state officially whether Xylella, they are Xylella free, mm -hmm. whether they have a pest free area or uh, whether they are infected and they intend to export uh, to the Union territory from a pest-free production site. And all these declarations are made available online. So Xylella fastidiosa, just very briefly, I, I do not enter in the, uh, much details, but as I said before, was notified in October 2013 uh, by the Italian authorities. There have been three FBO audits so far from the inspectors of the European Commission. One is currently ongoing in these days. Uh, extensive resources have been made available by the Italian authorities, but um, still there is 
uh, limited removal of uh, plants according to the union emergency measures. Only since mid-October 2015, seems that uh, the implementation of eradication and containment measures are, uh, have uh, started. But however, there is a continuous spread of the xylella out, uh, out of the original infected zone. Uh, but no movement of a specified plants is authorized from, uh, for the moment uh, to leave the demarcated area. So just to give you a short overview, uh, this is the uh, demarcated area. The orange uh, part is the province of Lecce. The green one is the buffer zone of uh, 10 kilometers. But as you can see, there are outbreaks moving slowly uh, towards north. Uh, at the same time, uh, Xylella fastidiosa was also recently notified by the French authorities on 27th of July 2015. Uh, the presence of uh, uh, Xylella fastidiosa, the subspecies multiplex, so is not uh, linked to the Pauca subspecies uh, present uh, in uh, Puglia. There are more than uh, uh, 100 outbreaks in Corsica, uh, and uh, two outbreaks were also recently um, reported in the Paca region, so in the uh, France mainland. Uh, more than 12 plant species uh, are known to be affected so far, mainly ornamentals. There is uh, really a concern uh, regarding polygala myrtifolia, which is known to be infected <coughs> in all of the outbreaks uh, so far. So there is uh, uh, further investigations are ongoing to uh, trace back the origin of this uh, source of infection. Uh, analysis are still ongoing also on the insect vectors. Uh, I'm pretty sure there will be uh, further uh, details provided in the next presentations. Um, however, EU emergency measures are currently being taken. So just to, a short um, overview of the Corsica uh, island where the outbreaks are present at the Paca region where two outbreaks have been uh, uh, found recently. Uh, however, as I said before, um, uh, survey of Xylella fastidiosa is mandatory in uh, all member states. So far, no further findings have been reported by the member states for the 2015 uh, growing season. However, uh, a EU guideline, uh, guideline is uh, currently being prepared uh, with member states in order to harmonize as much as possible survey activities across member states. Um, it's also important to mention that uh, in the past years, uh, since January 2014, there have been uh, several interceptions of coffea plants in the Union territory from third countries. In particular, six uh, consignments of uh, uh, con uh, coffea plants were intercepted at import uh, from uh, Honduras and Costa Rica. At the same time, uh, 41 Eurofit notifications were made by a number of member states, uh, Austria, France, uh, Germany, Italy, Switzerland as well, on consignments uh, of coffea plants which were already released in the Union territory. Um, seven notifications indicated the presence of uh, Xylella fastidiosa, the subspecies uh, Sandy, uh, while all the rest of the notifications refer to Xylella fastidiosa as, um, as such. Uh, it's also probably important to mention that the U, uh, as part of the union uh, measures that we took in May 2015, the the import of coffea plants from Honduras and Costa Rica is prohibited in the Union territory. At the same time, we are currently in uh, revising some elements of the Union um, uh, measures, uh, the 789 2015. We are uh, in the process to update the list of host plants, uh, specified plants, following the new developments in Italy and France. As you can imagine, the number of uh, plant species affected increase as investigations progress. So it has to be regularly updated. We are currently reflecting also on the role of plant passport for the movement of uh, any uh, regulated plants uh, into the union, which originate from third countries, also outside the, the marketed areas. Uh, also, the contingency plans for the member state. Uh, uh, there is a discussion that is considered to be a useful uh, 
tool uh, to make sure that there is a really a better uh, preparedness in case a member state has to take action uh, to uh, eradicate uh, Xylella fastidiosa in, uh, in, the, uh, in the national territory. We are also reflecting on the role of thermotherapy for the movement of dormant vitis plants out of the demarcated areas. As you probably know, EFSA made uh, uh, available a scientific opinion on very recently on thermotherapy. Uh, also, another point of the ongoing reflection is uh, about raising campaign uh, uh, across member states as a, a, a legal obligation. And finally, we are uh, also uh, reflecting on the possibility to allow planting of host plants in the very south of Lecce for scientific purposes, which for the moment the planting of host plants is prohibited in any demarcated areas. So uh, just to conclude, uh, uh, as also has been anticipated before, there are uh, still some knowledge gaps that need to be um, addressed. Uh, we rely a lot on the scientific community in to bring knowledge and further information about the full range of host plants concerned by Xylella in the Union territory, the role of insect vectors, agricultural practices, which role they can play, uh, treatment solutions, if any, sampling procedures, how to harmonize and how to make sure that really it's done in a very effective uh, manner, uh, because all this can uh, be uh, a very crucial support to our regulatory framework. So, thank you so much. And thank you, Pasquale. There is um, uh, time for some questions before we break for coffee, but if there's any immediate clarification that anybody wants to uh, ask of uh, Pasquale, I'm sure he'd be happy to respond. Yes. Um, may I ask if your office received any information about what is being done in the, count the non-member countries in the Mediterranean basin uh, with, with regard to the interception of um, Xylella um, fastidiosa. Yes. Thank you uh, for the question. We are uh, certainly, we received, uh, as I said before, the declarations uh, from all uh, third countries, including the Mediterranean countries, about the status of Xylella in their uh, territory. So far, we have received uh, declarations stating the uh, pest-free status of Xylella in their territory, uh, uh, but uh, no further mm, information regarding any uh, interceptions uh, so far. Uh, yeah. uh, I was wondering about the rationale between, uh, behind the 10 kilometer buffer zone and the 20 kilometer buffer zone for the province of Lecce. What's the scientific basis for this distance, for these distances? Thank you uh, for the other question. I mean, uh, the, the, the buffer zone um, is uh, um, 10 kilometer in all cases for the demarcation of the areas. Uh, it has been taken on a very precautionary approach. Um, so uh, this is the standard uh, measure. Uh, for the province of Lecce, um, it's also 10 kilometers. Uh, of course, uh, it's now uh, further expanding as uh, the new outbreaks uh, move towards north. Uh, so basically there is an obligation from the Italian authorities, from any uh, authorities, that once the buffer zone gets infected, they, it has to be uh, reviewed uh, according to the, uh, the recent findings. So it's a kind of dynamic uh, uh, approach um, that is in place for that. Uh, okay, I'm sure this will be uh, a topic within the working groups, but I'm afraid we must move on to the next presentation now. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I think it would be good when you ask questions that you introduce yourself um, so that everybody knows where the question is uh, is coming from. So uh, 
for those of you who are tweeting, uh, we have a hashtag that is, uh, Simon, I, I, I'm speaking under your, your, okay, it's there. So it's a Xilela workshop so that we can, we can gather all the, uh, all the all the tweets at the end of the of the of the workshop. Uh, the next uh, speaker is uh, Claude Bragard, who is uh, a professor at uh, the University Catholique de Louvain, uh, and also a member of the scientific uh, uh, panel of EFSA for uh, plant health. And he will uh, uh, speak about the risk of Xylella fastidiosa. Claude. Okay, it's better like that. Okay, thank you very much, Frank. Um, first of all, I would like to thank EFSA for inviting me to give you this talk about what is the risk of Xylella fastidiosa for Europe. And, and before starting this talk, I, I would really like to stress that most of the data I will present today is uh, the outcome of a collective work supervised by EFSA. And uh, without the outstanding contribution of several scientists, uh, such risk assessment would not have been possible. And that, that's important to stress. Another aspect I would like also to emphasize is, is the fact that besides the amount of data that was collected and anal analyzed for, with efficient help of, of EFSA staff, it is certainly useful to underline that we are lacking of data about Tsailela and lacking of data of course, in Europe. Uh, and, and this is why such a meeting is so important. So we, we really have to trigger the question and address the questions, where do we need to provide additional information on, on Tsailela? And that's what I will try to stress while uh, browsing over the, the risk assessment opinion that was proposed by EFSA. So a little bit of background on Xylella. So Xylella was found uh, in Italy in 2013. This was the first report of an outbreak of Xylella under field conditions in, in the EU. And, and at that time, of course, already uh, quite a large area was affected by the disease. So, so this is a, a picture of the symptoms, and I, I guess you will see many of these on the symptoms of olive trees. And this was quite a challenging issue. So um, we had to propose a risk assessment at that time for what we could call an unknown disease on, on olive trees with a pathogen that had not been previously reported in Europe and that was just de recently detected. So we really were lacking of data on, on what was uh, uh, the, the situation in Italy and, and we had a lot of questions. So one could say we were like uh, the Pitya of Delphi and uh, trying to guess, well, what is really the risk of uh, uh, Xylella for Europe? So EFSA issued a statement quite rapidly on, on Xylella in November 2013, and already uh, a few uh, points were uh, stressed, uh, and I will uh, emphasize on these. So the first one is that, uh, of course, there is a lot of hosts that have been reported for Xylella, but a range of uh, European wild plant species would meet Xylella for the first time, and we don't know really what will be the outcome of this. Uh, EFSA also stressed that uh, all xylem fluid uh, feeding insects should be regarded as potential vectors, and uh, the only nat natural uh, route for spread of Xylella fastidiosa was the insect vectors which generally fly short distances, but can be also transported by wind. And, and this uh, um, statement was published on the EFSA journal. You see the address uh, below. Then uh, uh, EFSA was also requested to prepare a full uh, best risk assessment for uh, Xylella fastidiosa and uh, to identify risk reduction options. And this was made taking into account the situation uh, and the current outbreak in southern Italy. So for this, uh, a working group was set up with uh, different working group members, uh, Jean-Claude Grégoire and Domenico Bosco, David Caffier, Rodrigo Almeida, Stephen Parnell. Uh, many of these are in, in, in the audience today. Uh, we have had the contribution of airing experts, uh, Donato Boscia and Maria Saponari, who are also with us today. 
and uh, uh, EFSA staffs uh, contributed, uh, Gabo Olo, Evelina Schenstek, Olaf Mosbach, and Giuseppe Stancanelli, and uh, uh, help also from GRC with Giovanni Strona. I, I won't speak too long about uh, the regulation about uh, Xylella in Europe at that time, and uh, mostly stress the fact that, uh, of course, Xylella is the causal agent of serious uh, diseases, the Pierce disease of grapevine, uh, alpha fat dwarf, almond leaf scorch, phony peach disease, plump leaf, leaf scar, citrus variegated chlorosis, several leaf scorching, and this really shows that uh, xylella is a kind of a polymorphic uh, pathogen and causing different kinds of diseases on, on, on different plants. The first work that EFSA did was to look at the distribution of xylella fastidiosa in the world uh, and collecting all the available information and you have on this map uh, what was uh, reported. So uh, xylella is mostly present in America, both North and, and South America, uh, in tropical, subtropical, and temperate areas. Uh, it was also reported in Taiwan, and of course recently in Italy and Iran. And something to be stressed is also the fact that uh, um, some literature were difficult to appraise, I would say, uh, and uh, with uh, some uncertainties regarding the presence of the bacteria in Turkey or in India or China. Another work that was done, and thanks to the contribution of Evelina and Rodrigo, was really to, to get a, a full list of the host range of the bacteria. Uh, so currently, uh, there is a, an electronic uh, searchable database that is available, and uh, the host range encompass approximately 300 species. An additional complexity level uh, with this host range is the fact that uh, the actual reported host range is different from strain to, to strain, and there is a very high uncertainty with regard to the potential of host range of Xylella fastidiosa in the European flora, as I already said. So you've got here the indications where you, you can find this uh, uh, electronic database uh, and the list of the plants that was issued by EFSA. Okay, and uh, something to, to, to be stressed also is the fact that uh, a lot of these hosts have been reported uh, through either surveys or experiments. Something also striking is that Salella is usually, uh, of course, as associated with a symptomatic host, but sometimes also is found on symptomless plants and uh, at quite a high uh, rates. Regarding the vectors, uh, as I mentioned, all the xylem fruit feeding insects in Europe have to be regarded as potential vectors. The transmission of xylella uh, by insects is quite peculiar in the sense that it does not require a, a latent period, yet the bacteria is persistently transmitted. And something to be also emphasized is the fact that in Europe, the type of vectors that we may encounter is different from the ones that we will find in the States or in, in Southern America. So in, in, in Europe, we have uh, spittle bugs, which are much more abundant. And uh, of course, Phileneus primarius has been identified as a vector for Xylella fastidiosa in, in Apulia. And I guess uh, we will talk about this later on during this uh, meeting. So you've got here a picture of Phileneus primarius. Something that was also uh, striking is that uh, uh, Phileneus could uh, also act as a hitchhiking uh, vector, uh, moving also uh, with uh, transport. So you've got here uh, the map that was uh, proposed and with uh, several potential vectors present in Europe. and. Uh, what appears clearly is that the vectors are uh, widely distributed over Europe. And there are several potential vectors present, as uh, reported here from uh, uh, a work on Fauna Europea. 
Of course, Silela is already in, uh, in Europe. It has been reported in uh, Puglia, and, and during this risk assessment, we had to take into account the situation in Italy and how it was evolving. Xilela is now in Corsica and southern France. And so uh, our main conclusion on pest categorization was, of course, to, to say that Xilela fastidiosa presents a ma major risk for the EU ter territory. Uh, it may cause, of course, severe damage. Uh, the impact on forest is more difficult to assess, and it's probably a question that we, we will have to address also. Something also to, to address is the fact that uh, we have certainly uh, environmental conditions that are required for the establishment and uh, the spread of xylella, but in Europe, there is also questions regarding the, the climate. Uh, uh, and uh, of course, the presence of the bacteria has been reported. So regarding the risk assessment, we identified pathways, major pathways for the bacteria, and two pathways were identified, mostly the plants for planting, with or without the vector, and infectious insect vectors, both with plant for planting and on their own mm -hmm. as a stowaway. We know that uh, entry can occur uh, with plant uh, propagation material. There have been some reports on this, uh, and th this was already recalled this morning. Uh, the bacteria is able to survive transport uh, to transfer to suitable hosts. But there is uh, uncertainties due to the last large host range, the plant susceptibility, and the lack of interception records, which is surprising. So we have had access to the ISO4 database uh, to look at uh, the rate uh, and the trade flows. And uh, this table shows you uh, among the, the host species that have been uh, reported, either by natural infection or by experimental infection, uh, the type of uh, frequency distribution uh, for the trade flows that are entering into uh, EU. So our conclusions on entry was that uh, the likelihood uh, was rated as very high, of course, because the association of the bacteria with the pathway at origin. Uh, we have uh, the plants for planting that are, of course, a source for outbreak. The host plants can be asymptomatic, and we have very high quantities of plants for planting that are important from countries where Xylella fastidiosa is reported. Concerning the infectious vectors, uh, the likelihood of entry was rated moderately, uh, mod moderate, sorry, um, because of course uh, uh, they are, the insects may be associated with the pathway, but uh, there were uh, questions regarding uh, the conditions of transportation and their survival during these, and uh, how they could uh, really uh, transfer the, 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 the bacteria. There are, of course, uncertainties lying on this uh, entry pathway. First of all, uh, the distribution and the prevalence of xylella in the country at origins is not fully known. Uh, there are only a few interception records. I, stre I stressed this. And uh, there are many plants that may host Xylella asymptomatically. Of course, there is a very large host range, as we, we already stressed. Concerning the infectious vectors, the uncertainty was rated as high um, because we have uh, uh, questions regarding the distribution and the prevalence. There is no data of interceptions of vectors in the Eurofit database at the time we did publish this uh, risk assessment opinion and uh, lack of data about uh, the various uh, insect vector species, uh, their frequencies um, in trade consignments, and, and the data on their dispersal capacity is also a question. So the question now is probably not anymore uh, if Xylella will enter into Europe. The question is how many time it did enter, and it will in the future. And uh, another question is, uh, is it possible to precise the route or pathways taken by the bacteria for entering into Europe? Because this is a major question we should probably address. Regarding the establishment of the bacteria, uh, we concluded that, of course, there is uh, a lot of host plants and, and vectors widespread. Uh, there is no natural enemies for xylella, and the, the 
climate in Europe is suitable for the establishments. And uh, of course, uh, xylella is known to occur over very large areas in different climatic zones. A question I think we should deal with is, is, is climate a limit? And uh, does the establishment depend on, on uh, host crops, vectors, and, and, and the different subspecies? Uh, so we did address this also in the opinion, and, and we provided several maps. Of course, the climate in Europe is different from other regions of, of the world where xylella is occurring. Um, and and, and uh, this shows you that uh, even if the climate is, is different, here you've got the annual minimum temperature uh, over uh, the world map. And, and we see that Europe is, is quite similar to regions where uh, uh, xylella is occurring. We did look also, but we did not publish this at the temperature in January, uh, as uh, Sandy Purcell proposed. And, and you've got a map showing this. So uh, you, you can see that in Europe, we've got also uh, red color, uh, like we can find in, in California or Brazil, for example, using these uh, data. I won't be too long on this because we don't have much time. Uh, but uh, this may, may be also a, a matter maybe of discussion during the meeting today. So we concluded, concluded on establishment that uh, establishment was, was very likely and uh, because of, uh, of course, the presence of uh, suitable hosts, uh, a very large uh, uh, range uh, and, and uh, potential host plants, uh, widely distributed, presence of potential vectors, and uh, high apparent capacity of xylella to adjust to contrasting climatic conditions. I, I may re recall you that uh, xylella has been found in Canada uh, and uh, in north uh, of, of the US. Uh, and, and there is, I would say, uh, conflicting information regarding winter recovery in infected plants. Uh, so this may be also may be a matter of discussion. Uh, Of course, there are uncertainties lying on establishments, uh, but uh, they are considered as low. Uh, Xylella fastidiosa is already established in Puglia. Um, there is no questions regarding the availability of the host range, but there are questions uh, regarding the susceptibility of uh, indigenous uh, European uh, plants. There are questions regarding the vectors and, and the one that could contribute to the spread of the disease. Regarding the conclusions on, on spread, uh, they were rated as uh, very likely uh, because, of course, of the wide uh, potential host range, the presence of vectors comprising Phileneus primarius, which has already been spotted as an efficient vector, the difficulty to interrupt all the, the movements comprising hum human ones, and the difficulty to contain the vector. And the uncertainties regarding the spread have been rated as medium because, of course, uh, it's not so easy to assess the role of human and wind mediated spreads. Uh, and there is still a lack of, on, on, of data on how far and how fast the disease can spread and uh, lack of pre precisions on how the current practices could possibly impact the, the insect vectors. And I would like to stress the, the fact that uh, we have enormous amount of traits, and, and this was a surprise to me. I, I mentioned the ISOFOR database, and, and when we look at how uh, um, humans are exchanging plant material, it's re really a striking feature, and we really have to take care of this with a, a pathogen like Xylella. This introduced uh, my impact uh, slide. So impact was rated as major, uh, of course, because of the high yield uh, and damages caused by the bacteria, costly control measures, and of course also environmental consequences. When you look at olive trees in Puglia, this is a clear uh, evidence also negative social impact. So uh, we concluded that the consequences would be major regarding all these elements. Of course, there are uncertainties on the assessment of consequences that maybe we should address today. 
questions about the agroecological complexity of the disease. It's also really a striking feature of, of oxylella. If you look at the disease caused in the States or in Brazil or now in Puglia, we have different features. It's a complex uh, interaction between the bacteria, insects, and environment, the plants, and this we have really to understand. There are also difficulties in, in predicting the exact dose range of, of a given strain and a lack of knowledge on the potential vectors in, in the risk assessment area in Europe. So to conclude, what is the risk of Xylella fastidiosa for Europe? Of course, the question is still open. Uh, xylella is now present. The vectors are also present. The hosts are numerous. The climate is favorable. And there is still a lot of questions to answer. But I would like to stress that such a meeting we have today is really an opportunity for us to trigger ideas and to, to find uh, ways to provide uh, additional data to, to understand really what is this problem. And to conclude, I would like to thank uh, so much all the people that contributed to this. Sorry, Giuseppe, I did not find a picture of you. Uh, but uh, you, you can recognize Rodrigo Almeida, Domenico Bosco, Stephen Parnell, Jean-Claude Grégoire, uh, Olaf, uh, David, uh, Evelina, who did a splendid job on the host range, uh, and uh, Gabor, who did help us a lot also, and Donato Boscia and Maria Saponari, who were really helpful, providing us with uh, such an amount of data on the Italian situation. So thank you very much for your attention, and I would be pleased to answer your questions. Thanks. Thank you very much, Claude. Um, uh, we're running slightly late, but uh, if there is a burning question or a need for clarification, we, we could take one or two. So that was clear. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Anyway, we will have time for questions just before uh, coffee break. Okay, so the, the next speaker in the program is, um, is Maria Saponara. Uh, she works at the National Research Council, the Institute for S Sustainable Plant Protection, and uh, her activities are in basic and applied plant pathology. Yes, good morning to everyone, and uh, thanks to the organizer for this invitation. Uh, I will be presenting the, uh, the data so far collected uh, by a, uh, a, in Apulia by a joint uh, research program by the, uh, some of the institutions that are currently working uh, on the outbreaks and uh, the CNR, which I belong to, and the University of Bari, the Siam Bari, and the research center in Locorotondo. The, the topic that uh, I will touch, uh, I will refer mainly on the biology and the epidemiology uh, of the outbreak, uh, uh, while the, the aspects related to the diagnostic and uh, to the genetics will be discussed uh, during the specific uh, uh, session. Oops. Excuse me. So th this map uh, is the, uh, the, the current situation uh, uh, on the outbreak. And uh, um, uh, as, as, uh, uh, as you can see, uh, the, uh, the, green, the green area uh, corresponds to the area uh, that have been surveyed and sampled and, uh, uh, with, uh, um, labor with, neg with negative laboratory tests. The red spot indicated the uh, the sites where infected tree have been found, and uh, as was uh, uh, remarked this morning, uh, the, um, the infection uh, uh, is progressing towards north and uh, in the province, uh, as you can see, uh, in the province of uh, uh, Brindisi, so uh, across the border of the province uh, uh, of Lecce. Uh, here below you see uh, just a close-up of the, of the map where you can see all the tri triangles uh, that correspond to the sites, uh, uh, to the trees that have been monitored and uh, those that are green are uh, uh, healthy trees and uh, the red one are uh, infected trees. This is the evolution of the situation. Uh, and uh, uh, starting in 2013 when the infection was found uh, in the area of Gallipoli 
and uh, soon after in, uh, in early 2014, uh, uh, more outbreaks were uh, um, found uh, towards the north, and as you can uh, see in this map. And later on in, the, in uh, summer 2014, more outbreaks were uh, recorded in the entire provinces. And uh, the spot indicated not a, a single tree infected, but the sites uh, where infected tree were, uh, were found. And so they, 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 they reflected the situation of a, a few hectares uh, or um, a more extensive uh, uh, area. And the, the latest map refers to the demarcated area as they have been uh, it, uh, de defined by the EU directive, and so the infected area in the province uh, of uh, Brindisi. The red uh, cross line indicated the 20-kilometer border of the province of uh, Lecce, where an intensive monitoring and eradication of the infected tree trees is uh, uh, taking place, and then the buffer zone and the surveillance uh, zone, where uh, other measures uh, have been uh, are been have been implemented. So um, going to the host, uh, host range of the Codiro strain, that is the, the strain that have been characterized in the Apulian outbreak. Uh, what, uh, w so far, what is clearly evident is that the, um, the predominant host and the predominant susceptible host of this strain in the area, in, in our condition, in the, uh, is, the, is olive. And uh, uh, this, this uh, Outbreak was discovered because of the appearance of this uh, uh, of the reporting of this new uh, olive disease. The disease was uh, named olive quick decline because of the uh, quick decline of uh, because of the symptoms of the rapid evolution of the symptoms on the uh, of these trees. Uh, it, the Italian uh, uh, acronym used to identify the disease is Complesso del Disseccamento Rapido dell'Olivo because. Other pathogens were, uh, were found, of course, uh, in, in this ancient tree along with the Xylella fastidiosa. The uh, symptoms uh, that uh, are uh, related to this uh, olive quick decline this, uh, reported in Salento in the Apulia uh, have been then reported also in Argentina and Brazil on olive. Uh, in, in all cases, they refer to infection of olive with uh, subspecies pauca, with isolate of the subspecies pauca. Although uh, they are different uh, strain, uh, they, uh, it's, they do not refer to the Codiro strain. As I was saying, uh, the, in the area, uh, Zylella was found uh, upon the uh, reporting of this new disorder of olive. The disorder includes symptoms of desiccation, uh, uh, mainly on desiccation and decline on olive, which of course are non-specific symptom, symptoms which can be caused by several other uh, uh, biotic or abiotic stress. However, if you go inside and uh, uh, to analyze uh, several factors that are um, affecting uh, uh, the, uh, the, the disease expression, we can see some peculiar uh, characteristic of this uh, uh, decline, which makes uh, the, uh, the disease uh, quite uh, um, uh, specific. And these are uh, mainly uh, referred, referred to the age of the plants, as the disease was at the beginning re uh, reported mainly on uh, century-old uh, trees and was less, uh, uh, and uh, did impact less the young trees. The distribution of, on the canopy, which is not, uh, 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 which is randomly, uh, on, in the, uh, affect randomly the entire canopy. And then the distribution in the field is also another important factor, because as you will see in the next picture, the disease has a, a, a quite, um, wide distribution in the, in the infected uh, uh, plots. And then uh, as well uh, the, the evolution of the, the symptoms and the, the disease uh, in the, uh, on the plants as well as the uh, expansion of the disease in the area. And this is uh, an example of uh, uh, a picture taken in the, uh, in the first, in the main outbreak uh, um, uh, in, uh, in the Gallipoli area, where you can see that uh, uh, there is no uh, 
a specific pattern of distribution of the of the in, of the symptomatic trees, but uh, the 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 area it, the, this plot was uh, almost uniformly uh, affected by uh, with the symptoms, and this is another uh, picture showing how the the uh, the distribution in the field in the in of the of the disease trees. Th this kind of distribution uh, of the of the symptomatic trees led to think that uh, maybe the cause could be an insect vector uh, disease. And, and that's, that was one of the elements that addressed the, uh, the investigation uh, to the uh, Zylella fastidiosa. About the quick decline, these are some uh, examples of uh, how uh, the disease progress in the, uh, uh, on the infected plants. And uh, uh, this is uh, a picture taken in 2013, and uh, the same location, the same plot, the picture taken uh, two years uh, uh, later. As well as this is one of uh, our uh, uh, reference plant, and uh, again, the situation how progress in, uh, in one year. And as the inoculum pressure increased in the infected area, we started to find also uh, infect, infected uh, symptomatic and diseased uh, young olive trees. And so this, uh, this is uh, one of the, uh, uh, an example of a, a local cultivars uh, affected by severe uh, decline. What we, we found in uh, uh, constantly associated to plants that displayed this kind of symptoms is the uh, uh, is Xalella fastidiosa, and this is an example of the colonies that uh, we could recover from the infected plants besides the other diagnostic tests used. And uh, what we are observing now in the new area that uh, where the, the, the the pathogen is expanding is a, a common uh, and a constant, um, a, a common uh, situation that uh, uh, it was observed in Gallipoli. And this is in the north uh, part of the province of Lecce, uh, where again what you can see are uh, severely affected uh, trees, olive trees. Again, another example in the new outbreak north of Lecce. And these are the outbreak in. Uh, uh, in Brindisi, again, uh, severe symptoms, uh, um, quite uh, diffuse, uh, wi quite widespread in the olive orchard. These are uh, other p uh, example uh, in the new outbreak, uh, uh, in uh, the, the latest one that uh, has been found in Brindisi. Again, the, the pathogen has been uh, identified associated to these uh, uh, severe symptoms. Uh, more example uh, of, uh, of the uh, situation in these new outbreaks. So, um, as uh, Pasquale was saying, an in-depth monitoring has been uh, enforced in the demarcated area, and uh, the results of this monitoring that is uh, carried out by visual inspection as well, laboratory tests, and uh, so far um, uh, more than 50,000 samples have been uh, tested uh, uh, in the region, and uh, as I showed before, uh, the green, uh, the green uh, color indicates the area which are free where the, the no uh, xylella has been detected, and the red one, uh, the, the positive one. And what uh, uh, it's, uh, it comes clear from, from this and is that the, the distribution of the xylella overlap the distribution of this uh, uh, olive quick uh, decline uh, disease. Going back, going in depth on the host range, um, uh, so far we have more than 20 uh, hosts that have been identified and, and naturally infected uh, with the uh, strain Codiro. They refer mainly not to traded material, but to uh, plants that have been found infected in the main outbreak, so in the first uh, outbreak where maybe the uh, pressure of inoculum is very high and thus uh, uh, several uh, species that are there now uh, are subjected to the uh, visit of the infective uh, vector. And so uh, we, we find that uh, several of these, uh, uh, we, we are finding a, a so high number of infected uh, uh, hosts. However, those re remarked in red are the ones that are most commonly the, the predominant host in the infected area. Uh, the other 
host listed uh, refer to few plants, in some cases a single cases that was found in a backyard or in a public garden and, uh, and so on. And uh, uh, among these, I underlined the, the three host species that uh, have importance as a crop uh, uh, for cr uh, crop production, so olive and uh, prunus. Here, uh, other, uh, um, the, the, the remaining part of the list, and uh, I want to remark that uh, most of these uh, hosts have been found uh, symptomatic, uh, except uh, four uh, or them, four, uh, only four of them have been found to be infected uh, um, uh, but being uh, symptomless. And uh, uh, just to show that the disease, the, inf the, in the uh, inf infected, uh, the infection by Xalella is also very severe on two other species. One is oleander, as you can see here, the plants uh, uh, declining uh, till the, the, the death of, uh, of the plant. And uh, another one is the also Acacia salinia, which uh, seems to be uh, very sensitive to the infection. And so uh, in uh, the, the, you see the results after one year of, uh, of the infection. And then uh, in, uh, in, this, in uh, one of the uh, research activity uh, has been uh, focused to find a, a possible alternative host which uh, would play a role in the epidemiology of the disease. This has been done by surveying uh, in several infected uh, groves uh, the, the wild flora uh, in, the, in these groves. This has been done systematically um, in, in different seasons, as you can see here, uh, um, uh, during summer or in, in spring and winter. And so far, uh, we do not have any, uh, we did not find any consistent uh, um, infection on, on uh, any of these annual uh, species, herbaceous uh, species uh, in the uh, olive groves, except um, uh, a limited uh, report about euphorbia that was found uh, infected in, uh, in, in late uh, autumn. The, the situation with other crops in the area, uh, for grapes we have been monitoring and surveying uh, grapes in commercial vine, in vine, uh, vines or as well, um, as well uh, is very common uh, the uh, intercropping with uh, uh, grapes and olive as you can see in the first picture. Uh, we have been serving uh, uh, either white, uh, white uh, er, uh, and red uh, grape cultivars. As well uh, in the last picture you can see uh, wild uh, uh, rootstock uh, growing on the border of uh, severe affected uh, olive groves. And uh, so far, we never found any natural uh, infected grape vines uh, uh, in the area. The same situation is uh, we are finding for citrus, where you can see uh, dead tree, olive trees, severe affected trees, uh, uh, along with a healthy, very healthy and looking uh, uh, citrus tree. Again, in, in this case, several samples have been taken uh, in this situation, and we uh, could never find any uh, infected citrus plant. Going um, to the vector, uh, as uh, uh, it has been reported, Philenus pumarius is uh, so far the, uh, the insect vector predominant in the area and proved to be vector of the uh, of the um, uh, of the Codiro strain, other uh, insect, uh, other xylem feeders, and the insects have been uh, screened and tested uh, for the um, uh, for their capability to acquire and transmit the bacteria. But so far, uh, we do not have any other data supporting they are capable to be a vector of the Codiro strain. And uh, with the Philenus spumarius, uh, uh, besides the first experiment that we uh, addressed on transmission on, on uh, periwinkle, uh, we, uh, um, during the last two years, uh, several uh, transmission experiments have been carried out to prove their uh, uh, ability to transmit to olive and uh, uh, oleander, and we got uh, successful uh, results. As well as uh, it was uh, uh, um, uh, experiment have been made with the uh, uh, Philenus uh, spumarius collected from uh, uh, pest free area and uh, caged on the infected, uh, uh, different in infected host to prove the, uh, that uh, they were able to uh, acquire the bacterium from different hosts, and this was uh, uh, and, and this was confirmed. 
and this is uh, uh, for for this year the the trend of the uh, infect infect infective uh, specimen uh, collected in the infected area. So the uh, as you can see, we have a, a peak that reach uh, almost more than 70 percent of the insect collected in the olive infected olive groves uh, test positive uh, for uh, uh, for the bacterium. Uh, in conjunction uh, with, uh, with this experiment, we also do transmission experiment uh, uh, every, uh, every two weeks, and the results are coming. And uh, the observation that we have made in these uh, uh, two years, uh, uh, the, the evidence that comes from the observation is that uh, the, the insect um, uh, the juvenile stage of the insect is on the herbaceous host. Uh, generally, uh, according to the survey made in the Lecce province, the first adult appear late in April, uh, early May. And uh, um, as the, the, the ground vegetation starts to desiccate for the dry season, the population of the adults move to the olive canopies. And uh, that is the period when we start to uh, to get positive uh, uh, insect uh, in the in the area, and uh, uh, and then um, uh, in October November, uh, for the uh, they go back to the uh, ground vegetation for uh, the uh, egg deposition, and just a, a scheme that uh, our colleague entomologist draw, um, highlighting uh, what uh, appear to be the the, the cycle. Uh, the epidemiology uh, cycle uh, of uh, in our area. So based uh, on the on this uh, data, the fact that we did not find any alternative host in the infected groves and the uh, life cycle of the insect uh, that uh, um, we we uh, we tracked, it seems that in the olive uh, Apulian olive groves the uh, transmission, the main way of the, the transmission and the expansion of the disease is from olive to olive operated by the infective uh, uh, vector during the uh, uh, late spring to, through the summer. And uh, uh, about the host and the capability to be infected by this, the vector, we put some uh, small experiment including some bait plants uh, in the infected groves, and uh, uh, the, re the results uh, are very uh, uh, in line with what we observed uh, in, the com in the commercial uh, uh, plot and in the infected area. And so uh, after more than one year, uh, eight of ten of the olives that we planted got uh, infected, as well as two uh, out of ten uh, of uh, uh, oleander. Thus the, the pressure of inoculum is very high, and the the disease spread is very uh, intense. This just to, to give you some uh, few data about the, um, uh, the bacterium concentration in the host plant related to the, uh, to the different season. And uh, uh, so this just to remark that in olive, which is an evergreen plant, we could detect the bacteria at least in, uh, in our uh, situation throughout uh, uh, all year around. So we could uh, um, uh, have a, a positive test during uh, the entire year. However, isolation of the uh, uh, active bacterial uh, was failed in, so in, uh, in some, uh, especially in the period of the, uh, with the hot temperature and uh, uh, in, in the case of olive. The situation is, is different with the different uh, um, uh, host species. For just as an example, the, the last row indicates the uh, uh, capability to isolate the bacteria from oleander, which you can see that fail uh, during the winter, maybe because the, the, uh, this host species is more sensitive to the cold temperature than, uh, than olive. Different is the situation uh, for the decidious tree, where uh, you can see that the bacterial is detectable in the leaves of this infected tree only late in the summer, when, which is also the period when we couldn't see the symptoms in the, 
uh, in, in, on, the, on this host, and uh, this is referred mainly to almond uh, and cherry. So just to highlight the, the difference between uh, the uh, host species and the role that they can have for in the epidemiological cycle of the uh, infection. The, the, the observation in the field have been supported by a pilot project from uh, EFSA uh, um, of, uh, which uh, is uh, uh, which uh, include the pathogenicity test uh, on olive plants. Different cultivars uh, have been compared and inoculated with the Codiro strain, and uh, uh, these results will be presented better, uh, more in detail in uh, in the specific session. But this is just sorry, just to highlight that the the uh, the cultivar Cellina di Nardò, which is the one of the widespread cultivars in the uh, contaminated area is the cultivar where out of 10 plants inoculated, nine uh, after nine months uh, got systemic uh, infection. Uh, uh, um, then uh, also the seedling we found to be a, a good host for the, uh, mul for the multiplication of the, um, of the bacteria. And uh, on this host, we started to see some uh, preliminary uh, symptoms, although they are not consistent on all the replication um, that, uh, that we, uh, that we uh, inoculated. These are some of the, the symptoms, but as I mentioned, they are not uh, uh, repeat, uh, consistent on all the inoculated and infected plants. Uh, I want to remark that all this activity will be further implemented in the project uh, uh, pond that has been uh, uh, recently uh, approved and uh, which, uh, as you can see here, will involve uh, 16 partners uh, from uh, EU as well as from uh, Costa Rica and uh, other non-EU countries. And so we, we hope to contribute with this project uh, to, the, uh, to strengthen the, the knowledge about uh, Zylella. And uh, I want to conclude. Uh, uh, thank, uh, expresses my thanks to uh, the uh, colleagues that uh, uh, have supported our team, and uh, mainly Professor Almeida and Professor Purcell that always have uh, given their uh, support and advice, and uh, the colleague from Brazil, Alves, uh, for the experience that they shared with us, as well the group in Parlier that uh, we was the, the, the first group that uh, we contacted after we found the outbreak because uh, we already had an established uh, collaboration with them and the Professor Bosco for supporting the entomologic uh, studies. Uh, I want to thank also all our team from the institution that I mentioned uh, before and uh, all the local institution, the Plant Health Service of Apulia and the other local institution and organization which are uh, carried out, carrying out uh, monitoring and survey and so, thank you. Thank you, Maria, for that account and state of the art of the outbreak in Apulia, but I'm afraid we have to press on. So if you have questions, please raise them with Maria in the breakout sessions or, or elsewhere. So I think we must go on to the next presentation. By Charles Manceau uh, from ANSES, uh, France, our sister agency in France. Uh, by the way, I would like to mention that uh, the presentations uh, the, dur made during the, uh, the workshop will be posted on the EFSA website uh, quite shortly after the, after the workshop. So you will have access to this material. Thank you. So I will speak about the situation in France now. And uh, I prepared this, uh, this uh, PowerPoint with my, my colleague, Marianne Maria Jacques from INRA. And uh, ANSES and INRA are the two main uh, institutes in France working on this uh, uh, problem currently. The first, the first uh, uh, things we faced to in France was uh, in, 12, in 2012 when we detect uh, four plants of coffee. Uh, we intercept uh, four plants of coffee, uh, which were uh, imported from Mexico and from Equator uh, in uh, in a breeding program for to to, to breed uh, coffee. And uh, these <coughs> plants were found infected by uh, ELISA test. So we work on these uh, plants, 
and uh, we succeed to, to cultivate uh, the, the bacterium. And uh, I, this, this slide shows you uh, the, the processing symptomatic samples we, we perform on. Uh, so we use uh, the, four, the, the three uh, PCR methods available at this, at this time to identify the, the Xylella fastidiosa. And it was the, the first uh, material we work on, and we were able to, uh, to, de to de develop uh, a phylogenetic uh, analysis of these, uh, of these samples, and we identified the, the, the strains. So the strains uh, by, by MLSA analysis. And as you can see, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, the phylogenic tree and uh, as you can see, uh, Xylella, the, the, by phylogeny, we can divide it uh, subspecies within uh, Xylella fastidiosa. And the strain uh, isolated from uh, the plants coming from Mexico was identified as subspecies uh, uh, fastidiosa. And uh, the two strains uh, isolated from the coffee plant uh, from Arabica, from Equator, was uh, close to uh, POCA subspecies. And I, I, I put on, this, on, the, on the slide the, the position of the, of the Codiro strains to, to, uh, to locate uh, different strains. So, so during this uh, interception, the, the, the strain intercept on coffee plants were not the same as uh, uh, the strain uh, which caused an outbreak in, in, uh, in Italy. And uh, this, uh, this plant was destroyed where that's what is destroyed and the, and the, and the infections were eradicated. But uh, <coughs> the French uh, growers was very concerned with uh, Xylella fastidiosa, especially since the, the, de the, the detection of the outbreaks in, uh, in Apulia in Italy. And uh, the, most peop the people from Corsica were very, very concerned about this problem because they, they got the CNIP of chestnuts a few years ago before this, uh, this outbreak, so they were very afraid to, to get the disease from Italy because there was a lot of trading from Italy and Corsica, and the climatic conditions in Italy and in Corsica are quite, quite similar. So they put a high pressure on the French government to, uh, to take measures in Corsica to protect the, the island from infection. So by measure for prevention apply on plant circulation in Corsica taken in uh, September 2014 and a special RIT in uh, uh, April 2015 uh, with special regulation of, on introduction of susceptible plants as forbidden, a derogation for professionals with specific controls and importation through only two arbors to manage the uh, control of uh, imported plants. And a very large action uh, of communication uh, uh, towards public, general public, inspectors, custom agents, and travelers. And uh, uh, 10 agents were recruited for phytosanitary control or for custom uh, disposition. And unfortunately, uh, at the end of July, uh, we found, uh, we identified suspected plant, uh, plant, plant protection services, uh, identify uh, suspected plants in a commercial area near Propriano in Corsica. They sent a sample to the laboratory of plant health at ANSES, and uh, we received the, the samples the day after, and uh, uh, on Wednesday of the 22, but the 20 seconds, we uh, discover positive results on the, on the samples, and we send the information to uh, the French Ministry and the regional Corsica uh, administration. And uh, <coughs> this, this information was very rapidly public. As you can see, this is the Le, Le Monde, Le Monde uh, article of the uh, 24th of July. So the, 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 the opinion in France was so susceptible to, uh, to this purpose that the, the, the media, the national media, spread the information very rapidly. So Corsica, it's just a map to, to locate the Corsica island, so just between France and Italy. 
and the pro piano uh, location where the where the disease was first uh, observed, just below Ajaccio. And the, 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 um, the disease was first observed on, the, on Polygala myrtifolia in, uh, in a, a commercial area, as you can see uh, the, the symptoms on Polygala myrtifolia in this uh, plant, this is the plant. And this is Polygala myrtifolia in my backyard. As you can see, it could be a very nice plant too. So the first things, they sprayed insecticides to control the disease. Uh, the day they, they they get the information, and they take in place they put in place all the recommendation in the decision of the EU, so destruction of the plants, and uh, <coughs> uh, the limitation of infected area and the buffer area. And since uh, July, the end of July, uh, we uh, until uh, October the second. We uh, analyze more than 2,300 samples from plants coming from Corsica. Pla uh, plants showing symptoms and plants no, with no, symptom, with no symptoms around the infected plant. Out of 2,300 two plants, we detect uh, 320 plants infected by uh, uh, real time PCRs. And uh, most of them are Polygola myrtifolia, but also Spartium gentiorum, Citisus, Pelargonium graveolens, uh, Ebe, Lavandula, and Genistae frotoides. All these plants are ornamental plants, and all these plants are located near uh, Polygala plants, infected Polygala plants. Uh, since October, the, th the, the we found uh, 10 more plants infected, two trees, one Acer pseudomplatatanus, and one uh, Quercus suber, it's a cork oak, but also Rosmarinus officinalis, uh, Myrtus communis, Cystus, uh, Asparagus acutifolius, and Artemisia. Just to show that uh, we are still discovering new infected plants uh, Plant which were never been found infected in Corsica so far. It's Olivier. Uh, we analyze more than uh, two 200 olive uh, samples. No, no one were infected. Prunus, no infected. Um, Laurier Rose, <laughs> uh, Oleander, uh, no infected. Quercus accepted when Quercus severe, no infection, and no infection on citrus too. What is the situation uh, at the October the 15th? Uh, in, in Corsica, we observed 143 outbreaks, most of them in the south part of the island, 138 in South Corsica, and on, only five in High Corsica, uh, one in the region of Bastia, and one in Calvi. And uh, during the the, the autumn, uh, in September, we observe on Polygala myrtifolia suspected plant in this area. Uh, it, it was be, uh, found infected uh, on October uh, uh, the 12th uh, in, uh, by, by Xylophilus, uh, Xylia fastidiosa subspecies multiplex. I, I will show you uh, how we, we identify uh, the subspecies multiplex. So it was in this area near the airport. And again, uh, October the, the 19th, in, uh, always in uh, Polygala Myrtifolia, uh, in uh, mandelieu la Napoule, it's uh, 30 kilometers west far from, uh, from uh, this area. So, so uh, now the Xylella fastidiosa has been detected mainland in France in, in the in PACA regions. So again, uh, we, uh, at INRA, uh, they develop uh, a technique to uh, perform a, uh, MLS analysis on samples uh, 
and we, we, we were able to, to type 70% uh, of, of, uh, of uh, samples of, of bacteria coming from samples collected from Corsica. All strains detected from in France belongs to uh, the subspecies uh, multiplex. And uh, there are, we, we observe two genotypes, actually, only two genotypes, very similar but different um, in one allelic, in one allele. And uh, <coughs> so this is the phylogenetic, the phylogeny of exilia, of exilia fastidiosa on the base of protein sequences uh, because uh, we sequence three strains, uh, the genome of three strains, uh, two str one strain isolated from uh, polygola and uh, two strain isolated from sparsium. And uh, as you can see, there are two groups of strains, one strain here and the, the two groups, the, the two strains for sparsium are very similar and uh, the, the, the three strains are very similar. Uh, th this is the, the sequence, comparison of the sequence with the Dixon strain and the Griffin strains, which has the uh, reference strains for multiplex uh, subspecies. So in France, uh, we can work in, work what we can say, it's uh, uh, the, the strains which cause uh, disease on, on the polygala myrtifolia as a uh, as a xylia fastidiosa subspecies multiplex. So the, the disease we observe in France is not an extinction from uh, Apollyon uh, uh, outbreaks. It's a, a, a new situation. And uh, what I would, would think it's, it's n we are not in the same situation as, as Italy in France. As, uh, I think we are not running up da uh, after an, an outbreak growing up. I think we are, uh, discovering uh, a situation which has probably, uh, which occurred probably for some, from long, long time on ornamentals uh, focused on um, polygala myrtifolia. That is what I would, would like to say today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this presentation. We can, uh, we can pick a few uh, questions on, on this uh, presentation and then open the floor uh, for a, a, a broader uh, discussion before the, uh, the coffee break. Oh, please, please use the microphone and if you could shortly introduce yourself before, that would be... This is, uh, this is uh, uh, Alexander or Sandy Purcell from uh, uh, Berkeley, and uh, I'll be giving a talk, I guess, later this morning. Uh, my question is about polygola. It seems to be, uh, is this a relatively new introduction or popular ornamental in Europe in generally, and does it survive in colder climates, like uh, here in Belgium? No, uh, actually, it, it doesn't survive in, uh, it's a frost-sensitive plant because uh, in my, I, I live in Angers and I have to protect the, the plants during the winter, otherwise uh, it's destroyed by the frost. So it's, it's cold sensitive. So it's this ornamental plant is, uh, is grown uh, in the south part of France. And uh, I don't know for, for how long we import polygala. Uh, actually, for, I heard of, on this new uh, on in this ornamental plant since uh, two three years, I, I I'm I don't I have no information uh, for how long they we we import and we grow uh, polygala myrtifolia. For me, it's quite new. Hi, uh, it's Silvestre from from Brazil. Uh, here. Uh, great talk, congratulations. Uh, I have one question. Out of the, the nine different hosts that you are identified through Xylella, are symptomatic or not? Yes, mo most, most of them are symptomatic. Actually, the, uh, the plants collected uh, for analysis were symptomatic plants in the infected uh, zone area, 
and susceptible hosts, uh, even asymptomatic, collected in uh, the buffer zone defined by uh, EU decisions. So some of them, which are, uh, are, are asymptomatic, but most of them are symptomatic plants. Anna Maria Donga from uh, Siam, Bari. Um, have you searched uh, the pathogen in the um, xylem feeders insects? No, not yet. Because not yet. yeah, uh, there, there is a, uh, a mission during August. Uh, entomologists go to Corsica to collect uh, to collect insects, and they collect insects. They collect uh, potential vectors but a few, and no one were, uh, were uh, infected by Xylella fastidiosa. But we are still in, uh, in developing the, uh, the technique to, uh, to detect Xylella fastidiosa within insects with a uh, very sensitive level, because uh, until now, uh, the detection uh, of Xylella fastidiosa uh, is not very sensitive in insect. Uh, so we are working on this technique to, to get a very low level to be able to, uh, to detect uh, Xylella fastidiosa at very low level insect, in insect. Oh. But today and for the, for the Corsica situation, we have not yet identified any vectors uh, in this area. A, a, a test has been developed at the real time lamp for insects, which is very mm. sensitive. And we, have it, we are okay. doing that for that. Um, we're well into the, uh, the, the time that we were, we have to finish in a few minutes for coffee to get all 120 of you for coffee. So let's take one more question, either to Charles or from any other of the presenters this morning. Um, you don't have to put your hands down again. Um, <laughs> you wanted to speak earlier, so. Okay. Uh, we have to think, up to talk about spreading of uh, xylella or that uh, xylella is there and uh, we import it uh, from other plants and we discover every day new uh, places where the xylella is there. Because we said, we heard before that uh, xylella is spreading by, from olive to olive. But uh, I'm afraid that uh, we have to think about uh, the xylella is in several, several other places and we have to think about that. What do you think about that? Uh, I don't know. Probably the colleague from Italy has, a better experience, has more experiences about that. But uh, because in, in France, uh, the main host is Polygala myrtifolia, is ornamentals. And the other hosts we observed are also ornamentals in the surrounding area of, uh, of, uh, of Polygala myrtifolia. It's not the same situation as in Italy, where we have large amount of, uh, of olive trees, and we can we so, we see the, the progression of the disease uh, uh, through through the DR charts. Okay, well, I'm sorry, but uh, as said, I think we need to break now for coffee. Um, if we can start again sharp at eleven o'clock, please. <laughs>